So we want to welcome everybody to the last 90 days. It's an insane time for to be involved with the federal government. It doesn't matter. It does not matter if you if there's the first time you've been here or the 50th time that you've been involved with this. This is the craziest time. We have $1.4 trillion in the 2020 budget, $738 billion. Raphael, billion. B. Jonas. <laughs> <laughs> and $662 billion non-DOD. And I'm telling you, all of it, every cent has to be spent within the next 78 days. And here's the clincher that most people don't even know, but because we do all the data, 81% of new contracts and recompetes by that as well happen in the last 90 days. That's why this cycle just keeps on perpetuating itself. And as we know, Jamie Zell, if you get a GSA contract, it's just wee right into the money, right? Oh yeah, it just falls from the sky. Get a big rake, put it in a in a bucket, and you just collect it. That's all there is to <laughs> it. Because well, let me go back to the other slide. There's 1.4 trillion dollars. Boom, that's the money pile. And now, is this really true, ladies and gentlemen? Of course, it's not true because selling to the government <laughs> is not that way. And if it was easy, I'd be out of a job. <laughs> but I'm not out of a job. In fact, they just keep making my job better because they do things like beta.sam.gov, which we will talk about today, as a matter of fact. I'm Dave Lowe. I'm the CEO of ISI Federal. We do data. That means we check and see what's happening in the marketplace, turn that into intelligence. Then we turn that intelligence into marketing so we can support your business development efforts. That's why we're here. And that's what we're going to do. A little bit about ISI Federal so you know a little bit about us. You can look on the right hand side is or is under the umbrella but we've helped companies for the past decade book almost a half of a billion dollars i know we're run, we're lagging behind you mr clark because you've been around for 25 years or something ridiculous but i'm catching up uh so with that but we have just tons of data that we turned into to um into intelligence including 132,000 program managers and 70,000 active buyers. Those are the people that you want to be around. We have a bunch of influencers in that in that pocket as well. But by and large, what we're talking about is helping you penetrate the market space. And we use things like GovBrief to press information out to the marketplace. That's why I'm all dressed up today as I had the briefing earlier that I got pulled into and at 11 a.m. and a VFedCon as, as methodologies for that. And we will be talking about GovBrief today, where we make you the SME. You want to be the SME, the subject matter expert, and where we will do the initiatives and we'll interview you. It'll be a, a dialogue and you can check out those anywhere you want. If you need some samples of that, let me know. But there's plenty of samples out there and examples of how we do this. But getting you remembered and ahead of the RFPs, critical, critical, critical for you to be successful in the marketplace. If you're waiting, everybody at one time, if you're waiting for it to hit the street, most besides you, Clark, because you always have the wrong answer on this one. It's what? It's you wait for the first time you see it. It's what? Trade's already gone. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. And I know Clark has got his ears plugged. And with us, we have the professor, Dr. <laughs> Rafael Marrero in the house. How you doing, Rafa? Hola. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Doing good. Rafael Marrero and company, experts, experts at socioeconomic certifications, helping you with your hub zone and your 8A and your service disabled, any of your Department of Transportation certs, and also with financing. There's just a little bit of money flying around for small businesses these days, Hunter, huh, huh, Dr. Ma Rafael. Well, we've helped uh, rescue literally more than 15,000 jobs more than 15,000 jobs through our assistance with the IDLE and the PPP program. Uh, we've been working extensively, helping companies reorganize rather than going for bankruptcy, keeping their, their employees uh, alive and well, keeping those positions open, and helping them reorganize certain business functions. Uh, so we've helped them put together business plans, go to market strategies, uh, incentivizing people to, to sign up for government contracting. And by the way, we just had a webinar in Espanol. <laughs> it was and great, we, by the way. Didn't understand yeah, a word, but you did. It, it, was, subtitled, it, was, Dave, it was subtitled for Dave. <laughs> I told Dave that all of my work for him is subtitled. And and Greg just says, see, and over here, uh, Zay, Jamie Zell, who looks like Gerard Depardieu, the French actor. <laughs> 
<laughs> the stunt double for uh, so anyway we just had 250 companies that never before ever had even heard about doing business with uncle sam who are now interested and we've started this new chamber this new chamber of commerce and we're calling it the calle ocho national government contractors association Conga. <laughs> That's the acronym. Conga. And, and uh, anyway, we're starting this whole new trend of like people who had never been government in government contracting that are now going to be working with you all and, and with us. And I'm really excited about that because these are people that had never, ever literally heard of government contracting because guess what? It was in English. So we're giving it to them in Spanish. So um, we're helping them bridge that gap linguistically, culturally to help them make that connection. And uh, these are savvy business men and women who are doing very well in the private sector pre-COVID and now are looking for opportunities with the government. So very, very positive news. And that's awesome stuff. And, and we, will, we will dive into some of the things that you actually covered in that Spanish one, but you got to do it in English so that I can pay attention better. <laughs> and I have with us, we have Jamie Zell, who's a El Presidente, little Spanish lingo there for you. Uh, for uh, gsalogic.net, I gotta get in so much trouble, I swear. All right, uh, and he helps folks get GSA contracts and maintain them. So say, hey, Jamie Zell. Good afternoon, everyone. Hope you're having a, a good wrap up to the year of the federal government. I know there's not much time left, but there's time to position and go in for the win. And we're here to help you do that very thing. That's we, exactly right. GSA schedules and uh, been doing the development for a lot of years and 100% um, track record. That's everyone we've ever gone after is a win, and we'd love to be able to work with you as well. Yep, likewise, that's awesome. And we also have Mr. Clark, who he's the only one that makes me question whether beta.sam.gov can work. However, we'll, we'll keep talking about that. But he helps folks with proposal writing, and even after you, I'll say this, even after you understand that there's a proposal coming out, you still have to respond. And you, you're going to be talking about some of the key pieces for that later. But introduce yourself, Mr. Clark, and where are you from? Well, uh, DKA, we're in West Palm Beach, Florida. We've been in business uh, a month from today. We'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary of uh, helping companies uh, prepare their proposals in response to government RFPs. And we're up over 360 contracts. We've helped our clients win. Uh, with the combined value now, it's uh, surpassed $1.7 billion. And uh, one of our most recent proposals was company that met at VFedCon. And uh, that's been submitted. And, the, and I got an email from, my, from that client this morning. He contacted the agency just to find out how everything was going. I just want to read it back to you. The, the government responded and said, we're still evaluating proposals. If we have questions, we'll let you know. I do want to commend you for submitting such a professional and well-organized packet. This will definitely help the process go smoothly. So that's what you, that's the email you want to get from your client. That's exactly what you want to get. That's great. That's the success story of the making. We'll talk, let's talk about that on Monday. I want to hear more about that in detail as well. And with us, we have the social media maven, Liz DeRosa. She's the crazy lady. And yes, she does wear her sunglasses at night. <laughs> that was one of it's my only, props. I was going to have sometimes, to... sometimes. Right. <laughs> uh, well, th thanks for having me, Dave. So I work with <laughs> um, uh, business owners who are looking to, you know, go to the next level. And so go to the next level with their brand messaging and using the digital world. And so whether that's web content, whether it's their LinkedIn profile growth, whatever they need to do to get that message out there, and especially is even more important now that we are all, you know, locked down and we are forced, right, to to engage with each other in the, in the digital space. Yep. And we're actually going to be redoing a lot of the things we're talking about today. You're going to know because you helped to assemble the the uh, presentation we did last week. Mm -hmm. And yes, I am reworking that because it was good stuff. And mm -hmm. so we're we're going to we're going to do that as well. So about this webinar, it's always for my favorite four letter word. Over 500 are registered. And that just happened because we had 250 sign up in the past three days. Uh, every second Tuesday, with the exception of today, it is at 11 a.m. Uh, and we dialogue with these these folks, and that's got to go. And uh, but we want to make sure that we connect you with the uh, with the federal sales experts, and we do get real about it. We don't blow sunshine. There's a lot of people out there that'll tell you just get this, get that, and you'll start making money. Nay, nay. There's hard work, and there's winning strategies that we'll we'll talk about, and we'll show off ISI Federal a little bit, as well as all of the people that are here for your viewing pleasure. And a quick disclaimer for anybody that's here, 
from the government, we want to make sure we we open this up for dialogue for you. This is not affiliated or endorsed by any agency. And this was given to us by GSA, by the way, uh, so that we could do this. And what it says is we want you government folks to participate and your participation in it and dialoguing does not indicate you endorsing any one of us or anybody else that's here uh, or any vendor. So now you can speak freely. Uh, just a couple things. If you have been living under a rock for the past three months and have never done a virtual uh, briefing like this, you can grab it maybe on the bottom, maybe on the top, but there's a bar that you can grab so that you can make us larger or smaller, however you would like, because there's a lot of controls. You can open up the panel on the right hand side. And with that, you can raise your hand, you can chat a question, you can let you can engage. And if you called in on the phone, which we have a bunch of folks in on the phone, you need to put in your pin in order for us to talk with you. There are handouts, there's four handouts there, and they are the 90 second challenge, which we will be talking about, the winnable opportunity matrix we will go over, and ISI federal capabilities, as well as going for gold ebook, so that you can download that all for free, my favorite four letter word. So the first thing that we need to know is why in the world did you decide to come be here with all these crazy folks? And it could be, that you're new to the federal space and you're just looking for some information, that's great. <laughs> or you have you have federal business and want to grow. I need to find I need to find buyers. I need help marketing. Or some nut sent me an email, and that has got to be one of the ones that you have got to say. Uh, at least somebody's <laughs> got to say that because I don't know who that nut might be, but I know that a lot of emails went out. That's all I know. <laughs> So we're going to, we have a lot to cover, so we're going to get we're not going to keep these open for very long. So we're going to get another five, four, three. It is painless. It is painless to to vote. Three, two, one, and and it's still coming. If we get it, was the fifty two percent, fifty four. All right, we'll give you another couple of seconds. Come on now, you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Sixty percent, sixty two. All right, I got to I got to close this down. So you guys got to vote faster. Next time, you got to vote faster. If you want to vote, you got to vote faster. Here you go. Here's why everybody's here. 40, 30, 48, 30, 40, 10. And obviously, you can vote for more than one thing. So there you have it. Glad that you guys decided to join us here today. It is it is my pleasure to be here. We are all, all, all here because we want to win freaking federal contracts. That's why we're here. And if you have a GSA contract, and Jamie, I'm setting this up for you in just a minute, there's a thing called eBuy where you get noted where you can only GSA contract holders get access to eBuy. Well, this is a eBuy monitoring tool so that you don't miss stuff and you can't tell me that you're not missing stuff if you're if you're monitoring eBuy because you forget to check or it was too much of a pain to log in or it just you just missed it when you're reviewing the RFPs. It happens on a regular basis. For the next few days you'll be able to test drive this for 30 days. Then it's going to go to 3 because once it starts getting really busy and August, it's not going to be free no more. We're not doing it for free. So check it out. And guess what? If you stay for a year, if you don't book 500% more than you spend on Quick Fuse, we'll refund all your money. And guess what we've had to refund? Zero because it works. And with that, I'm setting up Jamie Zell because you do GSA contracts. What is a GSA contract for the people that are new? There's a bunch of folks that are new to the federal space, so they don't have one. What is one and why should they get it and can they get one? For the new folks out there, GSA schedule is a purchasing vehicle. It's a tool that the government uses to streamline the acquisition of products and of services. It's also called a GSA schedule, GSA contract, FSS or federal supply schedule. MAS, multiple award schedule, all means the same thing. At the end of it all, it's one skillet with several handles on it to, that it's known by, but it's a tool that you use once you have it to go target business within the federal government. And, it's, and it, it allows you to fast forward to the acquisition part of where the buyers are at as they need products and services. Because they've got a lot, lot large workload in front of them. And if they don't have to spend as much time or effort spreading this thing out, putting it out to bid, reeling in bids, getting summaries on things. If they can work through pre-qualified contestants, which is what GSA proves, that allows them to uh, acquire things more easily, makes their job easier. And it also quite frankly means more business to the people once you have a GSA schedule. And I will tell you, if you're involved with the government or going that direction, 
ultimately you want a GSA schedule because you're going to run into opportunities where stuff is coming through GSA and it's like a membership status. If you don't have a GSA schedule, you're automatically disqualified. Yep. And that's just laying it on the line like it is. So you're going to ultimately want one because we come up with it all the time. We had one just last week. Client found an opportunity. It was a GSA-based acquisition. They needed a time machine, and it takes time to get them on schedule. So you can only do that so fast. So our idea is we always want to work with the client with advanced planning and preparation so they have their schedule and it's tucked away and ready to be used for the benefit of everyone. Yep. And what does it take to get one? You have to be in business for how long? At least two years from your date of uh, incorporation that you have your own website and email address. Um, this, uh, there's such a wide array of products and professional services, especially now with the PSS schedules, almost everything qualifies for GSA. So uh, aside from just a, a few thin things that are, are, are very minimal, almost everybody uh, has a, a product or service or a combination of things that they offer that's, that is a, usable as a portal through the federal government with GSA purchases. Yep, yep. Love it. And 100% track record there. So I appreciate that. If you're interested, let, let's find out who needs GSA help. <clears throat> Do you want, I want to get a GSA contract. I want to see if you qualify. Let's see, if you, you may want to see if you qualify. And how much does it cost for to see if you qualify, Jamie? It is zero. Zero. Phone, give me a call and we will talk you through it and, and, and tell you the ins and outs, answer any questions you have. And there, there's zero to qualify. Zero dollars to see if you qualify. That is a bargain at any price, especially free, my four, my favorite four-letter word. So with that, we'll keep this tight. We got 53% want to get one and 29% want to see if they qualify. And some folks need help with modifications and updates. And you some folks it. need making my GSA scale, sales requirement, and that falls into my territory, so that's a setup for me for later. But what, what is the minimum sales requirement for GSA, Mr. Zell? Brand new schedule, they expect you to book at least 25,000 in the first two years. And after mm -hmm. you're past your, your initial period of, of being a newbie, they want you to book at least 25,000 or more per year with your GSA schedule just so that you're using it and keeping it active. And that's actually a very low number when you look at the average successful GSA contract holder, which is in excess of a million dollars. So. Yep. 25,000 is, I don't want to call it pocket change, but it's close to that. <laughs> if you're getting in it to make $25,000, <laughs> you're doing the wrong reason. <laughs> you're doing it wrong. <clears throat> but you got to go through $25,000 to get to 2.5 million. Right? Absolutely. Got You got to do that. So that's a fact. So there you go. We did that. Winning RFPs, Mr. Clark, who you had mentioned this in the past. What? How many... How many dollars have you won for folks over the past 25 years? Not, not quite 25 years, 25 years less than one month. Go ahead. How many? Last year, we passed uh, the total dollar figure of 1.7 billion. 1.7 billion. Billion. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's fantastic. So when you're looking at um, – Winning RFPs, and this, this is not what I meant to put in here for you, but let's talk about it anyway. You, you, and you can talk about whatever you want, because we I actually tried to try to get some things in here, and it did not work for some reason. Uh, but let's talk about what it takes to win, and what are the when, when that hits the street, what's the what do you want to do? What's the first thing you want to do? When you when you when the solicitation comes out, you need to look at the performance requirements. You know what is the what is this to do and is this within our capabilities do we, is this what we do the performance requirement and then you look at the proposal requirements what are the minimum mandatory requirements what are the past performance requirements what are the sales requirements what you know what do you, do you have to have certifications what what are what do you need to submit for evaluation and then what are the evaluation criteria what are they going to what's the award going to be based upon and once you understand the performance requirements the proposal requirements and the evaluation criteria 
then you have to honestly look at your own experience and capabilities to determine if you have what it takes to win the contract and operate it successfully. And so and past performance is one of those catch-22s because that's one of the ways they weed you out right out of the gate. And you may even have the qualifications, but they're asking for past performance in a specific agency, sometimes in a specific department of an agency, right? So very difficult to be able to compete in some instances, right? That's how, that's how an agency uh, can tell you that they really want to keep the incumbent. If the, if the past performance requirements are so specific that who else could possibly have this past performance? Well, I know one company that does, the company that's doing it right now. That's right. And and they do that on purpose because guess what? They really don't want 50 responses any more than you want 50 competitors. Just saying. They just don't. So, uh, and now we're seeing turnarounds, the turnarounds shrink this time of year because they just are running out of time, right? Exactly. And this year more than ever. Yep, this year more than ever. Absolutely. So, um, how many folks out there need some proposal help? I'm telling you, Greg can help you because how many billions is it? This is a yes or no question. This is the simplest one. We should be able to breeze right through this. <laughs> 1.7 billion? Is that what I heard you say? Yes, sir. 1.7 billion. Love it. Fantastic. And it's okay. There's no wrong answer here. But if you want some help, I happen to know somebody, Mr. Clark, who can help. So with that, we're look at that. We got 46% already voted. Almost 50 so far. Very good. Very good. <clears throat> we're gonna give you 10 seconds while I'm buttering up the next gentleman who happens to <laughs> who happens to be in South Florida as well. So four, three, two, one. And you can do it, I promise. Boom. All right, there you go. 74%, Mr. Clark, need some help. So we'll make sure you, you get some information on that and you can you can talk with the folks that need the help. With us now, the professor, Dr. Rafael Marrero, who has a book of some sort. I don't know what it might be. I don't know what this <laughs> book is. Do you have a copy handy that you can show? Bam, right here. <laughs> Bam! <laughs> the La salsa, salsa secreta. secreta. Listen the to this. Sauce. Guys. The salsa sauce. secreta. <laughs> You're okay. almost Cuban, man. You're almost Cuban. Almost Cuban. <laughs> I was going to say, you need some booyah beans to go with that. You're almost there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He All showed right. up yesterday. So, you, you were in full, full armor yesterday. You were... You oh, are yeah. ready to rock and roll. We'll leave that alone because we're going to stay as apolitical <laughs> as possible today. Uh, so anyhow, uh, this also is is Dr. Marrero, who happens to be in front of Telemundo because he's all famous and everything today. Because you have interviews on a regular basis, and if you haven't, if you weren't at VFedCon, which which uh, Greg mentioned, he, he had he called in on the phone. Funny. Funny, funny. It was a good time, but we re, re, we redid that um, that piece. But I, one of the you things that I really me up. wanted you messed me up. What you messed me up that day? You messed <laughs> me up. <laughs> well, I was, you, I messed you up. That was so funny. So he's he's in a multiple media. He's being interviewed by everybody, and and he missed the four o'clock. He couldn't get back in time for the four o'clock. But he calls in on the phone. I covered for him. Calls in on the phone about halfway through the presentation. And he didn't know that he was on speaker, and it was very, very good. It was, it was fun. So, uh, but anyway, one of the things I really love is when, when you're out in front of folks, you're talking about your, your uh, la salsa secreta. Again, best, best I can do with that, being the token gringo. Uh, the, uh, but what we tell us about and there's, you have a whole bunch of things in there. So go buy the book. First of all, go buy the book. It's on Amazon. How much does it cost, Raphael? Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five dollars, and it's a, it's 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 a great lesson in everything you want to know about government contracting, written in fifty-two very short chapters, which are like daily reads. It's yep. very well written and designed uh, book. As long as you speak um, Spanish, it's great. And or correct. you can read Spanish. I don't care if you can speak it. You got to at least read. It. So. <laughs> So let's talk about this though, because I, I love what you when you when you present is it, like you don't want to ruin the salsa. You don't want too much heat, you don't want too much 
you have to have the right ingredients and you have to you have to have time and you have to do it right. right. You have to do things right. And one of the things you do in, in number 17 of, of your regular presentation is brand differently is a must. And and I and I have a couple examples for you just to set you up of the cards and the capability statements. But this is you, doing business with the government is not an accident. Very rare is it an accident. Let's just say that. If you're going to do it, it has to be on purpose. And you have to look like you belong here. Because if you don't look like you belong here, they're going to throw you out. They're not going to let you play. And I'm going to show you how important it is to look like you belong here so that you can connect with people that are actually have budget. We'll talk about that in a minute. But we have business cards and then professional email accounts. I always love what you say about this one. So tell us about what a professional email account is. See, all the time I get these email addresses from clients when they're starting out, like poppychulo at hotmail.com, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, can't, you can't use that, you know, or magdaddy at hotmail.com. You can't use that. You got to use something that people, first and foremost, it has to be professional, memorable, and preferably with your own domain name because you, you're creating a brand, right? And that brand is that taste, right? I mean, whether you're, you're, um, whether you're a bit uh, irreverent, tongue in cheek, if you're uh, cutting edge, bleeding edge, whatever it is that your persona is, you have to represent that graphically, aesthetically, and 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 it has to be a very good balance of form and content, right? Yep. So equal parts design and content, right? Just as important. And we put together some mean materials. You've seen them, David. And the fact is, when our clients go before contracting officers before teaming partners and primes they know that we've prepared them because they they can see the quality it's it's on point it gets the point across and not only that we prepare them in terms of the optics right how they should act comport themselves in groups what to wear what not to wear things things as simple as should i wear a four pass tie to this event uh things as simple as having a manicure versus not having one all of that stuff matters. It, it's really important. That's it. You got to look your best, right? You know, whether or not you're going to, things things as simple as that. So anyway, we help you craft a brand, a memorable one, one that people can relate to. If you look at our logo, you will see like three little ducks in a row because that's really what we're all about, right? Um, the lowercase typography is very light. Uh, it's not as dense. The color of the branding situation has like a yellow and a blue. We want to create this non-confrontational, friendly, open vibe. And the three ducks, I mean, who doesn't like ducks in a row? Who doesn't like rubber duckies, right? It's like unoffensive. It's like friendly. Like it reminds you of your childhood. And so these are the images that you want to evoke uh, in, in our case. So I wanted, I wanted people to remember. And that what, what I do is I send little rubber duckies to people when we're presenting our clients or to our clients. And they remember, they say, you're the duck guy. You're they the always duck. remember, you're the guy with the ducks. You're the duck guy, or they remember, you're the salsa guy, right? So right. Um, it's very powerful when people can remember who you are and what you do, right? And I always tell people, it's gotta be three ducks because in order to have a row, you need three. And I always emphasize people, process, tools, right? The three, right? So these are the three things that we focus on, both from a functional, uh, and aesthetic standpoint. And this one's great because this is this is Miguel Lopez Jr. And that is a he does yep. parking lots and and uh, dealing and you, you have a little bit of experience who and you may or may not have worked for a for a company that uh, <laughs> creates items that look like this. Um, yep. But yeah, and what I love about how you do it in in some of the some of the advice that you give is one is having matte on your cards so that you can write on the cards as opposed to having them gloss because gloss doesn't work with a pen. And yep. and from a, a traditional marketing standpoint, anybody that's here from traditional marketing, they'll look at this and that's too freaking busy, all this other stuff. No, this is a mini capability statement and everything is driven from your capability statement. So this has your next codes, it has your socioeconomic set-asides. Also, this is an, this is an example very clean mm -hmm. good good lines throughout a lot of information remember who you're pitching you're pitching people that want to make sure you belong in this space and if you don't have 
these things, just simple things like your DUNS and your CAGE code, but all your certifications, your GSA schedule, all the other vehicles, you see Seaport E on here, you see that they're they're 8A certified and it, it's ha it has a lot of information, but your NACE codes, your, your PSCs and all those. And then you have your capture six C's and what you have to embed these in it. And tell us about what those six C's are. Sure. So there are six essential elements of information. The six most important things that you need to communicate to your intended audience uh, are the things that you need to capture in an eight and a half by 11, single-sided, double-sided at the most, piece of real estate. Okay? Real You're competing for the most important battle, which is the battle of the mind, as Jack Trout and Al Rees discussed in, in their classic marketing, classic positioning. You're competing for a very important mental run and you need to communicate these six elements of information. Number one, you need to have a brief capabilities narrative, not to exceed 255 characters, including punctuation. This is your condensed, your boiled down pitch, okay? It has to fit in 255 characters because that's what the database is set up for on DSBS and other government databases, so we stick to that. Number two, the codes. Everything, boils down to codes, everything. It can be product supply codes, North American Industrial Classification System or NACE codes, SIC codes, which are standard industrial classification. These are all codes. Your DUNS number is also a code, okay? Your CAGE code, which means you are, you're approved and you're an approved vendor and you're registered in SAM. So the first question I ask someone when I meet with them is, what's your CAGE code? That right there, they don't know what a cage code is, that tells me that they're not SAM registered, right? So that we go back to square one, right? Secondly, I always ask them and I always task them with sending me a copy of their capability statement because a capability statement will tell you a lot about an organization or about a person. It will tell you how they think. It will tell you whether or not they place importance on the aesthetics of their message how much information they're actually conveying? Are they actually over communicating? Are they too technical? Are they too salesy? It, it, it says a lot about an organization and their culture and the way they present things. If you look at our capability statement, you'll see what I mean. Front and back, double-sided, there's enough negative and positive space, a good equation, a good balance between negative and positive space. You will see that visually, it, it, it forms a Z and going go all the way down to the bottom of the page so you turn it and start reading the next. These are all elements of graphic design and marketing, some of which we studied at Northwestern, by the way, at the, at the Kellogg School. And, and uh, we have a little bit of experience there in marketing, right? Top marketing school in the world. Um, so we studied with some of the top branding experts and we've put it to practice at companies such as Apple, right? So we know a thing or two about creating products and creating memorable brands. Um, I would encourage you to look at your codes, present them in a very brief, aligned por proportion. I like to do little tables to maximize real estate where you align a brief description of the category and then NAICS, PSC, and SIC so that you see them all in a nice little XY matrix. And then your customers. If you're from the commercial sector and you're trying to approach the government, the government buyers or the primes need to understand that you can bring value to them, that you're a low risk proposition because as a supply chain guy, I always look at how much risk is there in, in it for me to do business with this person, right? And it's all about vendor risk management. You don't want headaches, headaches. you don't want, you wanna make the oy vey go away. And that's my philosophy from a vendor management point, point of view. We're, we're so incorrect that it's not even funny, right? No one's gonna that, make that, the oy vey go that away. Was that was beautiful, that was, yeah, that was Cuban <laughs> Yiddish. <laughs> <laughs> so you have you have the, the 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 customers like who have you served in the past and like a brief description place of performance period of performance scope one liner the the contract value and what was your role were you a sub or a prime right those five elements of information along with a nice little logo of an agency a quick a quick visual snapshot of yep. who you've worked with okay and if it's a lot of people that you've done work with on the commercial side. Then we could do a nice little X, Y matrix with check marks in terms of skills that are relevant to that specific agency. You're trying and to tell a story. 
Very That's important. important because most folks are going to gravitate towards the federal side, but if you can tie it, their their commercial experience to it, um, that helps you bridge the gap if you don't have a lot of past performance in the federal space. And I love the fact that you're including the contracts, what contracts they have, your fundamental core competencies, and how many times have you seen a capability statement that you can't find the contact information? It's, 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 it's painful. It really is. I mean, <laughs> it reminds me of that movie when the guys go get fitted and like, look, look at these socks. It's painful. It's hurting my eyes. Right? <laughs> so you, you can't have, this is, this is all, this is communication 101. You should reiterate it at least three times. It's a memorable thing. The rule of three, mem uh, mem uh, make it memorable, make it concise and highlight it at least three times in the publication. No side of your of your capability statement should be without your contact information. You should always make it easy for your customers to reach you. Very important. And your telephone and number, your preferred method, whether it's cell phone, email, and make yourself accessible. You know, if you go by Rafa or Rafael, whatever it is that people can call you to break down that barrier. Okay. Yeah. Um, and you know, depending on the amount of real estate and how much you really want to get into it. I'm a big fan. Um, I, I like photography, and I think that photography is a very important point. Um, I want to make people memorable and likable. I took Abel here in this photo into a studio, and we, we believe me, we cleaned him up. He was a train wreck before. We gave him a tie. I suited him up, and we took him into a studio with a white background, like the Apple approach, and with a minimalistic background, and we, we wanted to create this brand, brand new capability statement. His website rocks, by the way. His website, his business card, his capability statement, his decks, and he's won several contracts. By the way, directly as a, the first contact, directly as a result of good, solid presentation and good, memorable presentation during Love the face-to-face -face meetings with contracting officers. Love it. So let's get to what, speaking of Rafa, what do you need yeah, from Rafa? Rafa, please, please, please help me. <laughs> help me, please. You need a socioeconomic certificate. What's that? Free salsa lessons. <laughs> yeah, right. You need help with your capabilities and SAM records, socioeconomic certifications, brand building, uh, your capabilities, slide deck. That's something we really didn't get into. What about a full immersion boot camp so that you can get a corporate makeover? That's that's for people that you know really need the 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 uh, the surgeon for uh, a mm -hmm. complete makeover. And then that other folks, if something else, please call me. There you go. Uh, I can tell you that that Raphael is the go-to source for anybody that we do business with because they are the ones that help you look the part. No different than me putting on a shirt and tie for for a briefing. Is hey, let's let's dress you up. Now you can't put lipstick on a pig, right, Rafa? No, you can't. So you got uh, And you no, gotta take no matter how much perfume I put on you, you got to look good <laughs> to begin with, right? So yeah. there you go. So we'll give you another five, <clears throat> four, three, two, one, and boom. So here you go. We got folks that need socioeconomic certifications, STEM record, and capabilities. Everything's driven by this. Everything is dri driven by your capability statement. Very important to have one that's clean, clean, clean. So everybody at the same time can say the net. If you call somebody and you say, I want to do business with you, they tell you to what? What do they tell you to do? Go to. I want to do business. Beta.sam.gov. Yeah. So they, we, they are to going to to, <laughs> we are going to explain why that is the beta.sam.gov is an interesting place. And I don't want you to just trust me. I want you to take the challenge because we're going to do this as a 90 second challenge. Download this from the side. You can go to isifederal.com, and it's right there at the top. You can point and click, and it'll take you right to it. And these things do change a little bit. So if the numbers aren't exact, it's because the government is changing it on the backside, not because of us. So you go to 90 Second Chance. What is it? What we're looking at is in a fiscal year time. So fiscal year is from when to when? It's from uh, October 1st to September 30th. That's the fiscal year for the federal government. Now, we're doing our best to do apples to apples and compare these things. We're gonna do opportunities and awards. That's what we wanna know, right? How many opportunities were there and how many awards were there? And if this doesn't blow your mind, you're in the wrong place. So you do this search results, 
over 100,000, 124,362 opportunities, that's solicitations, as well as a combined synopsis and solicitations. So these are real solicitations. They may not have all gone to fruition, but that's the best we can do. Solicitations that were put out in the calendar or fiscal year of 2019, because we're not done with 2020 yet. So we're looking at this the last fiscal year. So now you want to say how many were there for opportunities, and then you want to look at awards. So after you click that and you go to the next part and you find out there's 10 million, I didn't stutter, 10,748,714 contracts awarded. That's 10.6 million contracts that didn't show up on beta.sam.gov. Now, when I started doing this 10 years ago, my head kind of hurt because I'm thinking, somebody turned me on to FPDS, which is now on beta.sam.gov. And I said, what is happening? Is anybody else asking that question? What is happening? If there's a difference of 10.6 million, what's happening? So you look at look at this, and usually if you're see if you're seeing stuff at beta.sam.gov, there's lots of competition. We did a we did a formal debrief. Always should do that, right, Greg? Always. Yep. When no. those are draw. Always should do it. And there's lots of competition. We had 142, 142 respondents from one of our clients with Department of um, commerce what about the other 98 percent? that's what we're talking about it's actually more than 98 percent, but i'm just rounding it down because it makes it, it's mind-blowing do it yourself don't trust me do it yourself most have less than five competitors most 76 percent have less than five competitors so what is your plan for getting to the other 98%. If you just want to play in beta.sam.gov, you already have what you need. All you got to do is go on beta.sam.gov and look, and look for your name codes and everything else. Just know that you're only seeing two out of 100, of 100 that hit. Maybe. Maybe. So let's talk real about what's in the way of the other 98%. I want you to think about when you were in grade school and you really liked that person in grade school. And you're all you do is just think about them all day long. But they don't even know you exist. And that's a fact. And it doesn't matter whether you registered on SAM, there's four, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people registered on SAM. Hundreds of thousands that are doing business with the government are on SAM. There's millions on SAM, but hundreds of thousands, only hundreds of thousands are doing it. So what is it? People buy from people they know, like, and trust. This is nothing new, folks. This is I didn't make this up. You know I didn't make it up. You and I buy this way. They buy this way. So if they don't know you, they can't possibly like you or trust you. So as a result, our job is we have got to get in front of decision makers. So now I have a question for you. If you get in front of a decision maker, what is the outcome? Is it you know what it takes to, to, to close a deal or you can be the expert but need help in closing or you wouldn't know it, there's no wrong answer. And we wanna get flat out honest here, right, right Liz? We're about to get into it for real. Right. Absolutely. But we want to be honest about it. Either you have the pieces to be able to close it. If you can close it, then what you need is you need to be out. Of, you need somebody to help you get out in front of those people. Right. And if you're the expert but need help closing, that's OK, too, because then you need somebody to ride the coattails of a salesperson that can help you manage that sale. And if you want to know what to do, then you need a combination of both. So there you have it. So we're getting another five, four, three. You can do it. Two. <laughs> One and boom. I did not expect this. This is pretty this is pretty even across the board. I did not expect that, which is exactly why I love asking these questions. 
because it throws me for a loop. I would have figured that more people would say, oh, just get me in front of people. I'll close the deal. That's what usually happens when I talk to people. So the last 90 days, we have less than 90 days, as a matter of fact. We have less than 90 days because September 30th is 78 days. 78 days away? So with that, we need to find those buyers and we need to proactively market and then you need to be building those relationships. So how do we do that? Number one, we are looking for competitors by your NAICS, PSC, and SIN. SIN is attached to your, your GSA schedule, which is uh, looking like NAICS right now as they transition to the, new, to the new model. But let's just leave it at that. Then you look for key indicators. That means it does something happen before you do your work or does something happen before you can, because you have to buy a computer to put a license on the computer. So you have to have a computer. Does something happen before you get the license or is it construction and you, you do NEPA studies and you do other things? What happens before? What are key indicators that something's coming down the pipe? And then recompetes. What happened five years ago or four years ago that you want to line yourself up with for recompetes? And Greg can talk about that at length about the importance of paying attention for those recompetes and when those things are happening. So what we do is we have 64 million plus contracts that we're looking over. We have 1.2 million federal contacts and embedded in those are vendors that are doing business or not doing business with the government. And they're doing business with active buyers. And then we also know 132,000 program managers. I don't know anybody else that has these. That's why we exist. And that's why it's proprietary data that we use for our clients, which could be you. Then once we understand who they are, we got to get about the business of going out in front of those people. And Liz, I'm going to rely on you because th these pieces, what you have here is you have ISI Federal that handles some of those. GovBrief can help with the push. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about that. VFED can as well. And being the SME also wraps around what we do every single day. So tell us about what you see. I know with us, we do emails, phone calls, and we want to leverage those relationships to get those introductions with specific people. But you do it on the social media side, mm -hmm. and that is included in emails and well, as well as targeted introductions, right? So social media, and you mentioned this, Raphael, consistent brand. Mm -hmm. Brand consistency. Be, making sure you're being you, first of all, if it's you, if you're a whack job like me, I'm a whack job. That's who I am, <laughs> right? I'm just, what you see is what you get. But you need to be authentic with your brand. So tell us about what happens with social media and how you, you do it. Sure, absolutely. Well, I mean, you could have the best website and, and capability statement, but if you're not able to share that messaging consistently on social media, right? Are you putting yourself out there and leveraging the digital space as much as you should be, right? And so you're not always going to be, you know, putting in a proposal every week, but you can on a weekly basis or hopefully on a daily basis, putting out information about your past performance, about your success, about who you are, what value you can bring. And so that's what you can do on social media to start relationships, to reignite relationships and, and put out your brand. And, and I couldn't agree more. And it's more, more and more important with social media and putting yourself out there. And I think that goes with being the SME too, because you want to continually mm -hmm. put people out there, SME being the subject matter expert, mm -hmm. right? You, you want to set yourself up as a subject matter expert and showcase your skills. And one of the ways we did, we just did it. We just did it with, with, with Delcino Miles. And I'm going to go on a tangent real quick. And I want to show you Delcino Miles is with the Miles Agency, like the Ohio State University. But we did four email announcements. It was about 26, 27,000 folks all together. We had 1,189 clicks. 100, it was actually 129 registered by the time we went live, and that just happened today, right before this at 11 o'clock. We went from 11 to 11.40. 19 agencies, 56 were with FEMA, and that was our target because we were talking about public involvement for crisis and transit disruption. So we were talking about disruption. This is what blew my mind. Ten. 10 immediate opportunities right now, 23 of them in Q4 2020, which we are in right now. Then we had some, some looking forward saying, hey, I'm gonna need this in Q1 of 2021, which is only two and a half months away, and then five for, for Q2 of 2021. 
46 total opportunities. And we know, ladies and gentlemen, most of these are not going on beta.sam.gov. We bypassed that whole system, and now they know about the Miles Agency, and Delcino Miles is the SME. So what we're also doing is recap emails, linking to the video, sending them out. All of the registrants are going to get that, but we also have a 30-day follow-up for everybody who clicked. So every single person that clicked, we're making sure that we're going after, because maybe they just couldn't go to the to, to the to the briefing and we're scheduling one-on-one -on -one meetings. We know for a fact that we're gonna have over 30 meetings right out of the gate. Right out of the gate, we have over 30 meetings with key decision makers. So what this, I don't want you to go, you can go to your, your session handouts, you can download the winnable opportunity matrix because guess what, this applies right here. We need to get to the people that need to like us and trust us. Much better if you're a subject matter expert talking about something specific for somebody. And sure enough, what we're doing is we're building relationships and letting people know about the contracting officer and the PM. That's who we were after. Some of those could be technical representatives, probably too. But we're driving these people into the green. Sure, we want to know ahead of time, which we do, because it's not out on beta.sam.gov or anywhere else. We know something nobody else does. And we're also elevating ourselves as a known a known quantity for these folks. And that gets us to the building relationships. And I love this because you helped make this up, Liz. Building rapport. Tell us about building rapport. Sure, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, like the slide says, be real. You know, if you're quirky, whatever you are, like you have that opportunity in social media, unlike an email that's static right? In social media, you can have a graphic, you could have a video, you've got something that can that can infuse who you are and help create that relationship, something that somebody's going to be attracted to, you know, to build that. Yep. And I love your seeking out targeted connections because LinkedIn is the place to go. Professionally, Absolutely. LinkedIn is the place to go. And then developing trust. One of the biggest things you you I mean we wind up sending a lot of emails so we get we get cranked out with the spam. <laughs> Sometimes you don't have a choice. You got to take the shot, right? But I love developing trust. I think trust developing trust happens to deal with being faithful in small things. If you say you're going to do something, do it. Just do it. Right? Sure. And and I also love this one. Continually be of value. What do you mean by that? Sure, absolutely. Well, I think all of us on this panel give away something free, right? You have a free group, you give a free review of something, you offer this free webinar, right? There's there's something free. So you're showing the value, you're giving them something and saying, you know what, and that all goes back to the developing trust and solidifying that rapport. Um, because they're likely to then come back to you if they found value in what you gave for free. And so that is something that you can just continue to do. And they may not be the person that's going to, um, you know, be buying from you, but they're going to recommend you to their friends, right? And then that's going to help. And and that that's free, right? When people are starting to refer you. Love it. Love it. And we're going to get to some questions now. Um, hang on one sec. I'm going to. I'm going to get here. Let's see. Is that working now? I do want to ask one more question. Oh, I will do that in a minute. Okay, questions. Anybody got questions? There, we had so many questions last time that I, I just I didn't even prep anything or anything like that. Who's got a question for us? For any of us, some you guys got to be able to open the questions on the right hand side because otherwise we're gonna feel like we did more than we we expected. Who who needs to know something about? There we go. Hand raised. Hold on a sec. Let me get to you. Let me find out where you are. How do I get to where the people's hands raised are? There's, way too many people in here can i open this up and do this better hang on guys i promise i'll, I'll find it okay julie julie hall you're muted can you unmute yourself yes um i was wondering a little bit of the pricing information for what you're referring to here and whether each of you are separate uh you mentioned uh and took and took polls for each of you kind of separately so i'm curious I'm, I'm assuming you have separate services and that there's an overriding uh central platform perhaps yes so can you so, into that, so please? we are all trusted partners of each other and we wind up throwing things over the fence whoever does it best that's the answer 
Um, so there's different pricings for different things. I know Raphael, you have pricings for your SAM registration. I'm gonna get into pricing, some pricings for Liz and I in just a minute. <clears throat> Uh, Jamie Zell, you you have yours. Is how much to get a GSA contract? Forty four ninety five flat rate fee. Forty four ninety five flat rate fee. Greg Clark, you're all over the map because it depends on how complicated it is, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Fee structure varies up from one solicitation to the next. Yeah, but that's a great question. And as far as we're going, you just hang on for a second. I promise you, we're gonna we're gonna get your pricing right because because I tell you, we will take your money and we'll deliver. <laughs> So did yeah, that answer I'm your question? Sure you will. I just I just want to know if I can afford you at this point in time. And so uh, <laughs> we, we're going to we're going to tackle that. We have things that, that, that if you're do it yourself or we can do that. But we want to make sure we, uh, we 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 get you what you need. I appreciate what? that question. Linda Ward. Let me get let me see. Can you uh, Linda, are you there? Linda. Hello. Are you there? Oh, it's not working. It's it's. I'll 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 keep you. I'll, I I don't know. It's not on our side. I think it may be muted somehow. Uh, and then we got Mark Kachansky. Did I say that what? Kachansky or Kachansky? Is that right, Mark? Many have tried. Um, <laughs> so I guess my question is, you know, you guys are talking about this, you know haven't been involved in the government for many years, not necessarily as a contractor, but, you know, I remember even when I was a lieutenant, you know, we had to fire all of our ammo at the end of the year because, you know, you, you, you know, you know, you use it, you know, use it, you lose it. That's right. <laughs> Do you really think that's going to be the case this year? I mean, I, I think um, you talked about the budget, but if you look at the spend, you know, the government's only spend about 15% of what they normally have this fiscal year. So, I mean, do you really believe they're going to spend the remaining 85 percent or your your theory is they're just going to spend some lump sum of money, certainly not all of it? They're going to if if they don't spend it all, they're going to work their butt off to get as much of it out as they possibly can, because even with. And there may they may pass some some legislation or something to be able to roll those things over, but there's some. There, it's it's wired in to do this, and it is it is different. I agree with you. So, no matter what, we do know that they're going to be spending money because we're seeing all the activity that's happening right now. GSA activity compared to last year, this time of year is over double because we see it all with quick fuse. We see it, so that it's already they're already doing the push because they've been. I mean, we've been dealing in in COVID land, right? Right. So I, I, my guess is they're going to do their best to, to be able to spend it all. But I've heard same thing as you. They're not going to be able to. But I, I'll bet you they try. No, I mean, I agree. I, you know, you just you can't get blood from a stone. Right. I mean, you know, you the pipe, the, the pipe is only so big. I just you know, I think the key thing is it's more of a focusing thing. Right. Than a than a quantity play. Correct. I do. I do think that there's 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 a focusing play, um, but I and the, the fact of the matter is, you still got to get out in front of people. So, so there you go, Linda. I, I can't get you there. Let's see, D Mark McCreary, uh, McCreevy, uh, discount offered. Yes, we have discounts that are coming your way just momentarily. If you talk with anybody here that that is on this call, I guarantee you get a discount. What's going on with the funding for the rest of the year? Buying season has been rough so far. Will funding be released later than usual or just take this year be lower than usual? It's the same thing you just said, Mark. <laughs> so the answer is nobody really knows other than we are seeing an, an, an incredible amount of activity. So the, the funding is the funding's there. The funding is already there. It's already allocated. They have to spend the money or they're going to lose it. So um, we will, if you have any, anybody else want to pop up with any questions, we will be glad to ask and answer or have your, have your questions answered. Bob, let me unmute you, Bob, you Bob McCabe. Thank you very much for uh, taking my call. So um, I work for a manufacturer that manufactures solvents that NASA, SpaceX, Lockheed Martin, some other big guys are using. Mm -hmm. We have a cage code. We're on dibs. We're on SAM. Some of our products have NSN. Some don't. What would you say would be like the next step that we should take to start selling? 
So they're using it on aircraft. They're using what are they using it on? Um, aircraft, medical equipment. It mainly cleans um, or removes greases and oils from metal and plastic. All right. So a it's classic for carrier solvents for graphite and stuff like that. So it's in every industry. So so I would look at whoever is buying the oils, the aircraft, any of the machinery that you're going to be cleaning. I would look at where the money is being spent for those, not necessarily for your solvents, because that could disappear into different places. But if right. you look at what they're being used for, chances are the person that's responsible for that item is also responsible for the purchasing of the pieces of those. And if not, you're one degree away playing the Kevin Bacon game. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. So, so the push, the, the push that I would say is identify those people that are responsible for those types of purchases. And there's thousands of them, thousands. Right. And so yours is a yours yours is a lower dollar threshold for for those. And it's a repeat business. Once you're in, they may be purchasing it over and over again. But uh, that would be the methodology I would say is identify the buyers. And most of it's with the buyers. I don't think your program people care unless you have something really really interesting for them. And can I ask you one more question then too? Sure. So being a manufacturer of chemicals, we can basically manufacture a bunch of different chemicals that we're not manufacturing now. So mm -hmm. is there a way to find out what they buy the most of? And oh, sorry, you know, that's used for our current chemicals. Or yeah, we can we, use other products. Yes. If you you mean competitive products? Yeah. Yeah. We can so part of the part of the research that we can do is to identify by by name if it's a if it's a unique enough name but certainly by competitors and see how much they're spending okay that would be the place to go great question though bob so Thanks. we'll be in touch those were softballs for me just so you know <laughs> all right fantastic thank you bob and we are going to move on let's see if there's anything else i don't see any other questions there uh we're going to move along because i do want to highlight what liz and i talked about yesterday Coaching you, save five, save 100 bucks. Somebody was asking about discounts, save $100 just by being here. Two weekly video calls, actionable growth items. Love it, love it. LinkedIn messaging, helping with that. Um, and then managed services. That means that you actually do the work, right, Liz? Yes. Yeah. So those, those can, they can help you. Um, in 90 days, you will 3X your connection. Said so three, three times that. And I promise she will wear sunglasses when she's talking with you. <laughs> So and then the other folks asking questions about some of the things like like you just did, Bob, and that is for do-it-yourselfers. If you here's the most important thing: do something, right? And if you just need the buyers, you want the buyers, and you want to do it yourself, that's okay. Here's it's very simple: 250 buyers, 500 buyers. We'll look at it by NAICS. We can do combinations of NAICS and see who bubbles to the top. They're the most important people. If you want to look at some something more specific, we can talk about that. Market Essentials, which is our major package that we do. We do a, a version that we do, and it's thousands and thousands and thousands of buyers. So if you want to do it yourself, the best methodology, you just said, Bob, hey, who are the people spending in my space? That's a Market Essentials question. Feeders, understanding who they are, getting thousands of those, that's, that's what you need. As far as a 90-day push, if you need to get the information out there and you need people to do the follow-up, we include market essentials in it. We do a briefing and you have to do it by the end. Of, you have to start by the end of this week because we just don't have time. We need 30 days to be able to get you in a briefing. And the last day we're doing a briefing is, is uh, the 20th of um, August, last day, because they're not going to show up. But we just did one and we had... A, 128, 129 people registered for it. So that's why we're doing the briefings to push your information out there, personal introduction campaigns to the top people at each location and our capabilities campaign to everybody. And we will guarantee you that you will have one-on-one -on -one meetings all the way through September into October because, well, you'll we'll probably get it through about the middle of September and then everybody's gonna kick you to the curb and you'll, you'll be meeting with people in October. But that's what we need to do. That's what you need to do is get yourself out in front of those folks and make sure that you are making the impact. So that's what we do. And we have we only have a few slots left for that because we, we're, we're, we're maxed out almost with, with, uh, with clients to be able to do that. The other ones, if you're not sure that you even want to be here in the federal space, got the answer for you. Preliminary market assessment is the way to go it's all the market essentials information without the contact information so what we'll do is we'll look at it and say hey 
What does it look like? And then if you decide that you want to do your market essentials and do the whole thing, that's not a problem because we already have the data and we can we can retool it up and then have the do your competitors report and everything like that. We can look at competitors, specifically the competitors that are doing specific products or or services that you know of, agency spend and the patterns and and NAICS and PSC. And we, we look at how many folks are purchasing, how many, con, how many competitors do you have per contract? That's the big one. Are they shortlisting to less than five? We know most of them are. So that's what we want to figure out. And we want to show it to you in your market because it's unique for everybody. So if you're not really sure, that's the, be that's the best place to go. So with that, I'm going to open up this last poll. And I know we're running a little bit behind, but we had a lot of people talking about great things. So do you need the 250 buyers for $299? We'll send you a link. Do you need the 500 buyers for $349? That's obviously a better, a better deal. Send you a link. Do you need market essentials for all the buyers in your market? Do you need market essentials, which is your what, what is what is necessary for you to really see what's happening in your marketplace and identify all the buyers? And do you need a, the, the 90 day push? Because that's the biggest thing. If you don't have the people on staff ready, and most people don't, that's why we're here, we can push this information out into the marketplace and we will get you cooking. So with that, we're going to give you a couple more seconds. And I think we do have another question here. I see one from one second. And I will see if I can pop this open and answer this. Linda has a small niche business with printer ribbon and personalizing gift items with laser engraver. What kind of business could I expect from the government? The government buys all kinds of little trinkets like that for you know their everything, any kind of promotional materials. They are there is a place for that, right, Jamie Zell? There's a place for pr promotional materials. There absolutely is. Yes. Yep. And then, can you help me with buyers just in my state in Texas, Ale Alejandra? Yes, we can. We can dis dissect that just for Texas. And we can also, depending on what you do, and Linda, you too, we can also look at look at folks that are doing business with the government um, for promotional materials. So with that, let's see. Yes, we can find the buyers. Yes, we can find buyers in any market. Is there any market that it doesn't happen in? Yes, there is a market it doesn't happen in. And guess what? It's mostly revolving around legal. That's the one place that we found that there's, there's not a lot of, legal has to be turned into training. Um, let's see. Is that it? Is that we good with all the questions? And then I'll go ahead and shut this poll down. Four, three, two, one, and boom. So good deal. Everybody that you know, a lot of folks want things. So we appreciate that. We will be in touch with you. We'll send you the links for those and you will be able to purchase. And with closing this out, $1.4 trillion plus 2.2 trillion in stimulus. Next 78 days. 78 days, all you got left. And I agree with you, Mark. I'm not sure. They may do some kind of extension of some sort. But by and large, we are still in the throes of what's happening. And that, and we do expect that most of the contracts still to be happening. If it goes on a little bit longer, that's great. That's that's extra bonus, right? If you have a GSA contract, you can use QuickFuse, Q-U-I-K-F-U-S-E.com. And you can test drive it for 30 days with a 500%. If you stay, if you stay for a year, we will guarantee you will sell a lot more. Jamie Zell, there's your contact information. Thank you for being with us, Jamie. Good stuff, as usual. Appreciate My pleasure it. to be here. And yeah. uh, whether you got a schedule or you're looking to get one, we can help you either way. I'd love to be able to assist with your ongoing life cycle of your GSA schedule if you happen to already have one. There you go. Awesome. Greg Clark, thank you again, yes, sir, for all that great information. Thank you very much. Hope to hear from, you, uh, from everybody. Yep, you'll you'll be doing it. And Dr. Marrero, as usual, with those sexy blue glasses. <laughs> Hello, everyone. If you uh, if you need any assistance uh, launching your brand uh, and becoming procurement ready for the federal government, we urge you to give us a call and give us a try. We're uh, very good at what we do, so give us a call, and we'd be very happy to uh, consult with you and give us our, our our honest opinion about what we can do to help you get to the next level. Thanks. Fantastic. And Liz DeRosa with the socialness. She's a socialness people. <laughs> Social <laughs> socialist. Um, just reach out to me on, on LinkedIn. I'm I'm Liz DeRosa there. And if you have any questions about kind of taking that 
that formal branding that you've worked with with Raphael on and, and taking that into the digital space to create your your SMEness to build that rapport and trust with people. Um, you know, you can do that in those next 78 days that you can make an impact for sure. Absolutely. And you can check out ISI Federal on YouTube and LinkedIn. Connect with me. Send me a connection. If you look up ISI Federal, you cannot miss me. I'm all over the place. The next one. Mm. Success 2020. We're down to the last last two months. So we'll be talking about the last things you can do, the last shot efforts, as well as making sure that you're ready. And otherwise, we will see you then in August. Thank you very much for being here, especially shifting for the one o'clock. You guys are all awesome. Every one of you, I don't care what anybody says about you. We love, love, <laughs> love that you're here. And we'll uh we'll make sure you get the uh the information for for your folks. For, for follow up and thank you all for joining us and uh, for taking the time today. We will see you next month. Take care guys.